Hi, I'm Heath with Titan Machinery. i um, been a service tech here for just about 19 years. Today we're going to be going over the 8240 combine. So on your transition cone, um, one thing to look for on here is make sure you're not getting a hole that's starting back in here. Um, one, the easiest way to actually see that is take your first concave on the right side here, drop this concave out, and you can actually see in around and make sure you don't have a hole starting back here. Um, if you got just a groove starting back there, um, a lot of times what I'll do is actually take the rotor and everything out and weld weld your cone up just so you got some more, some more meat in there for that thing to wear on. Um, if you let it get, let your cone keep getting thin enough to where you got nothing to weld to, you end up putting a new cone in at that point. On the impeller blades, you got the wear bar here. When this wear bar is got gotten wore down to where the width of my finger, so if my finger is sitting here and I can still see blade on the outside of that, you're good for another year. If you stick your finger here and you cannot see that blade anymore like this one, you need to be replacing this wear bar before it starts cutting into the ear because you can see this one already has started cutting into the ear on it. So if you replace this wear bar, you're going to save your, your actual impeller blade to where you won't have to replace your blade. The other thing to be looking at is your rasp bars. So here I got a rasp bar that's um, wore out to where it needed to be replaced and then I got a, a new one to compare it with. So when your bolt that holds your rasp bar on is half gone, you need to be replacing that, that rasp bar. Um, otherwise if you keep letting it wear in like this, when you go to replace it, you actually end up trying to weld a nut to here to actually get the bolt out. Um, you can see what a new one looks like in comparison to this one on on how much less threshing this this one will do than your new one. One other thing to look at is your concaves. Make sure that you don't have a lot of these bars in here that are getting bent up and wires getting bent. And then also the two bolts up here that hold the top in, make sure them bolts are not broke off and down on the bottom there's two dowel pins that actually hold the bottom of the concaves in. Um, make sure them bolts aren't broke that your bottom of your concave can actually drop out of the frame. Vein wise, of course just look up here and make sure all your veins are still in here. On the right side of the machine there is actually two veins over there. So there's one that runs over the top and then one that runs down the side. Um, make sure them two veins are in here also. You have the, the 10 on this side and then the two on the other side. A lot of times what will happen is if you have, have any kind of form material come in, um, what it will do is it will knock the two veins out on the right side pretty much right away. Also check your concaves to make sure they're level front to back. What you'll do is you'll loosen up the stop bolt on the front, or on the back and the front, and then actually bring your concaves all the way up and make sure that you're hitting on the back, the middle, and the front. Um, so what you want to do is make sure your concaves are level to your rotor to where they're not sitting either down in the front or the back. Um, so bring it, bring your concaves all the way up slowly spin the rotor around by hand and then adjust this bolt or this clevis up here to actually bring the front of the concaves up or down to get them level to the rotor. If you run them when they're unlevel you'll run into a lot of threshing issues. Um, also you want to make sure that your pinch point and everything is good. Um, so when you bring your concaves up when you, after you get them level, make sure on where you're hitting on, on your frame. Um, you want to be hitting directly on the bottom of the concaves um, so that your, as your material's coming around, 
it's going to hit and that's going to be the tightest spot to, to knock everything out. Um, after you get your concaves leveled, your pinch point checked and set, then you actually go and adjust these stop bolts to zero your concaves out. Um, so what I do there is run the rotor as fast as it'll go and then start slowly bringing your concaves up till they just start contacting your rotor. And then come down here, tighten these stop bolts up to where they're hitting the concave frame and then you go into your calibration screen and recalibrate your concave position. So now we moved over to the right hand side of the combine. We're going to look at your rethresher housing here. Just come in, make sure you don't have any holes getting started in your rethresher housing. Check your bearings, make sure you don't have any bearings that are rough in the bottom, the middle, or your, your idler pulley here. Also, back in here, right where the housing mounts to the frame, Look back in here and make sure that your housing isn't starting to crack back there. What we've done in a case like that is we'll put either a reinforcement plate back on the housing or we'll put a brace on from the housing back to the frame of the combine just to keep this thing from sitting here and starting to vibrate and break out. Another thing to look at is up on your tensioner arm up here. There's two bushings that are in this bracket. Make sure that this arm isn't starting to get a lot of movement happening on it, that your bushings are starting to get wore out. The tailing sensor, also on the rethresher housing, if, you are, if you're sitting here with the machine running and you're starting to show tailings, um, there's a sensor down in here. Most likely what's happened is that sensor is stuck to where it's not going to give you an accurate reading on your tailings volume.